All right, tell me what the Kluber trade, uh, this uh, portion uh, ironically brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. Uh, and, of course, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. All right, what does the Kluber trade mean to the Indians going behind and going forward? I think it's uh, going forward, it saved them some money. I think this is basically a salary dump less. It was kind of, uh, you know, some people say it wasn't, that if it was a straight salary dump, they wouldn't have picked up his option at the end of the World right. Series. But this was kind of a, you know, we'll pick up the option for $17.5 million, and then we'll trade them, and we'll get some, some, some kind of return for, uh, you know, player-wise, and we'll also save, you know, X number of dollars. Did it? Seemed to be they had a, they had to make the first or only deal coming by just to make sure they got rid of him. Well, I think they talked to a couple. I know you know at the winter meetings in San Diego last week they were talking to the Angels. I think they were talking to the Padres. Uh, and uh, you know Texas kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, at, the, at the you know they need Texas missed out on Rendon. They missed out on Donaldson. Right. So they needed something. Uh, to uh, you know, they're going into that new ballpark. They needed a name and new ballpark, and they all. It, it looks like the Angels have loaded up also, so they got to beat the beat out the Angels and the Astros right. in their division. Yeah, and, and Oakland is always sitting there. So right. you know, and and Kluber fits in well with that veteran uh, rotation. You know, Mike Miner and Lance Lynn. If if Kluber's healthy, was he as good a guy that you've interviewed or or covered over the, all these years since 1983? Was he as for a guy who was superstar, you went to Cy Youngs, that's superstar yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Was he as good a combination of good guy, good player as, as you saw over the years? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he, didn't, he never said anything. Right. You know, I think if you got him alone, he was much better. But in a group setting, in an interview set, setting, you know, he was yes, no, and uh, let me get And he was always looking for the exit, you know. He, he didn't ever say anything like, I, I love watching you on more sports than this. <laughs> no, to me. he never said that. But he did like Game of Thrones, which I oh. give him credit for. So we, we talked about Game of Thrones a so lot. So to get to that point, to, for him to know about Game of, that you're talking about Game of Thrones, he, he's one of the guys who actually does. You, they say Normally they say, well, I don't read it, but somebody told me about it. He apparently read you. Yes, yeah. So, we, you know, we, and I think, uh, but he was, you know, I think, you know, he really set the, uh, you know, he set the bar high for that whole rotation. No question. You know, about and, it. and they followed him. I mean, uh, you know, Clevenger and Bieber and Carrasco and I mean uh Josh Tomlin, you know, those right. guys those guys uh, really fell in line behind All him. All right, so Delano De Shields comes here. His father was a good player. It yes. doesn't help the Indians with the uh, with the son, yeah, but yeah. It, it helps that his father he's got good genes apparently. Um They've got nine outfielders. Let's take a look at uh, some of the names. Some may scare you, some may not. Greg Allen, Jake Bowers, Delano DeShields, Daniel Johnson, Jordan Luplo, Oscar Mercado, Tyler Naquin, uh, Fra uh, Franmil uh, Reyes, and Bradley Zimmer. Let's start at the back because you got with uh, Tyler Naquin and Bradley Zimmer, there's injury situations. What, what, what's their story right now? Yeah, Naquin won't start the season. He's recovering from ACL surgery on his right knee. And that'll take him to win. Uh, He's not going to be ready to open a day, opening day. So I, I don't know. Probably the All Star break. Maybe the All Star break a little okay. earlier. Zimmer is is healthy finally. I think he's been in. He's been to Cleveland last month to participate in some swing camps to work on his swing. And uh, you know they wanted him to go to winter ball. He didn't go. Uh, he just wanted to kind of get his head together because the rehab had been a year and a half stuck in Goodyear, Arizona. So uh, <laughs> I think he. Going to swing camp. Yeah, this is a big. Uh, this is a big spring for him. He's. I don't know if he's going to make the club, but hopefully he stays healthy and maybe starts the season at AAA okay, and, and goes on. We from mentioned there. Greg Allen. You know what you're going to get from him, right? Yeah, Allen kind of is an interesting guy. Uh, he kind of reminds me of uh, DeShields. You know, he's kind of right. fast guy. You know, leadoff type, but he's never. You never. We haven't seen what he can do with 400 to 500 at bats. Right. He, he, Every once in a while, he shows some power too. Yeah, he's got a little bit of power. You know, he's 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 not real left-handed. He's he pops the ball up a little bit. He's all right. The back end of the bullpen. Let, let's pronounce the Emmanuel's last name now. It's Class A. Class A. I hope he's better than a Class A pitcher. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at the back end of the bullpen. See what we have. This is uh, Brad Hand and Emmanuel Class A. Uh, let's see what they did last year. Uh, of course. Uh, that was in uh, 2019. Anything there that jumps out at you? Of course, uh, Class A, 
Is that uh, with Texas or is that uh, the minor league number? No, that's with Texas. He pitched okay. like, like I think he was in like 21 games with uh, Texas at the end of the season. All right, so it's not much, not much of a sample size. 21 strikeouts and six walks. So, uh, is that about right? Yeah, and I mean that for a young kid, a, a, a 21-year-old, hard throwing, you know, reliever. This guy, his velocity is his thing. Less he's throwing, he almost averages 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. He's got a good cutter. Uh, and, well, he's going to uh, have to face at least three batters, apparently, with the new rule. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, and his splits are good. You know, lefty, righty is, uh, you know, he, he, there's there's not a big difference, so he can do that. And, uh, so, and you know, he's an exciting guy. Either he, he maybe he's a closer in waiting, or, you know, he sets up hand. All right, so hand, 34 saves and 39 opportunities. At one point, it was so much better than that, almost perfect. And yeah. then something happened. Yeah, he struggled uh, in the second half. I think... Uh, you know, I don't know if he got worn down, uh, but I think this, you know, Class A, maybe James Karinchek, the other ki uh, the kid that came up last, the rookie that came up late last year, both hard throwers. Maybe they can uh, get in, you know, intermingle with the uh, uh, hand and give him a, a chance maybe to pitch in the eighth inning sometimes, not where he's the closer every day in and day out. 2-0.